Hi guys, I'm Quiv, uh, the lazy geek in Japan. And today I just want to go through um, my workflow for Nina, for using Nina, the astrophotography software, um, along with my equipment. Uh, so before I go into Nina, I want just to show the equipment so that everyone knows what I'm using. And then we can jump into just connecting to Nina, actually using Nina to set up uh, the sequence and uh, plate solve and all that stuff um, and also like as part of this series i want to go into details of all of the little things i did in the config to make sure that like merge and flip works with eq mod or my autofocus is working with the eaf because the uh, zw eaf is cheap it's small it's cute it's also garbage well not quite but it has a lot of backlash let's say um, okay, so first things first, let's start with the equipment. So my equipment is set up all the time in um, under this Telegizmo uh, cover, and I also have a desiccant underneath. It's just the right size for my mute. And here is the equipment. Okay, so the main scope is a Newtonian. It's a Vixen R200 SS, which is an 8-inch f4 telescope. In the draw tube here, there's actually a pH uh, a coma corrector called the pH corrector, which makes uh, this telescope f3.8. I have the ZW EF autofocus focuser here, along with a little like plate adapter you can see in, in white here to make it fit the uh, Vixen scope. I have a uh, little like T adapter and stuff and tilt adapter here. An electronic filter wheel, again from ZWO. It's, uh, I use it mostly for narrowband, uh, which I will not use today. I'll just set it to the L filter because this is the ASI 533MC Pro, which is an OSC camera, a one inch uh, square sensor. Pretty, uh, pretty new. My uh, cable management is garbage, so don't pay too much attention for to it. And the desiccant, we don't need. Um, yeah, my guide scope is an Evo Guide 50 ED from Skywatcher. It's a great little scope. You can see I'm heating it up to avoid any dew on the lens. I have an ASI 178mm as a guide camera, which is, yeah, I mean, it's not really made to be a guide camera. It has too many pixels, but it works fine. Um, and underneath we have the trusty uh, EQ6R uh, mount, uh, which is the old version without the USB port. Um, so the EQ6R mount, I'm not sure whether we'll be able to see that. It's um, here we're using um, EQ Direct uh, cable directly to a computer. And if I go a bit back to uh, here, we can see at the base of uh, the scope, we have this little thing, which is a computer, um, as well as, well, yeah, it's a computer, and everything is connected to that particular computer, and I access it uh, via uh, Chrome uh, Remote Desktop. So that's the equipment, and now we're going to connect to it uh, via Nina. Uh, so to do that, I have my uh, laptop here, which will, uh, which I'll use to connect via Chrome uh, Remote Desktop. Cool. So let's get started. Okay, and here I am. I am connected to this little computer uh, on the left here via my laptop uh, here. So that means I can just like go inside and do exactly what I'm doing here. But just for the sh sake of showing you this, um, you can actually see what's happening while I control this. So first, we're going to open Nina. And Nina, I'm using version 1.10, uh, the latest nightly, and I highly recommend using it. I mean, 1.9 is the official stable version, there's, but there's been so many fixes in 1.10 and enhancements and all that kind of stuff that I really recommend uh, the nightly. My nightly is the most current one right now, which is uh, nightly, uh, nightly number 76. So first things first, we're just going to connect the equipment. Um, there is a way to just like connect everything at once that's been configured here. Uh, but I will uh, do it one by one and I always do it one by one. I like doing it one by one uh, simply so that I know what I am doing. So first things first, the camera. So you can always, you know, have a drop down for the cameras. There's tons of good stuff. Uh, but I'm going to use my um, 533MC Pro and just connect to it. 
And just so I don't forget, although there's a nifty feature in Nina that I built uh, that uh, will check that for you along with many stuff when you start your sequence, um, let's not forget to turn on the cooler. So I set my temperature here, minus 10, and then I clicked here, and now the, the cooler is on and it will gradually go to minus 10 degrees. Uh, one thing, don't even bother using the minimum duration. The minimum duration um, does provide for uh, like gradual cooldown, uh, but it's useless because the ZW driver already does that. So you don't need it. Also, uh, the ZW driver has a bug that happens from time to time that when you use minimum duration, it gets stuck in the middle for some reason that is a mystery. So uh, in other words, don't use this. Just set your temperature, click on this button, everything's going to be all right. You're not going to do anything wrong with this. Okay, I, I'm double checking also, and this is something I always do, my camera settings. Uh, the reason that I'm double checking is that if I've used the camera in another application like SharpCap uh, in between, the camera might have changed its gain. And so I want to make sure that I have the correct gain. For me, I'm just one above uh, Unity simply because I want to uh, take advantage of the jump in t or the reduction in read noise for this particular ca camera. Uh, and I want to make sure I'm just above that step than at that step. I don't trust programming enough to, uh, uh, to have uh, figured out that correctly. Okay, the filter wheel. Again, the filter wheel will be fairly useless, uh, but you know, I'm connecting to it. Uh, so this is using Ascom, obviously. Uh, by the way, um, yeah, so you obviously need to have Ascom installed before you use Nina, but uh, if that's necessary, like uh, hard to install all the prerequisites, I can do a little video on that if anyone is interested. Um, so it's on the L filter. Uh, I can change my filters, but obviously uh, we want to make sure we're on the L uh, filter. Cool. And I can hear this little uh, wheel moving around. Uh, the focuser now, the ZWEF uh, focuser, I'm gonna connect to it. And uh, while I'm uh, looking at this, you can look in my equipment settings. You can see that my step size is 20. So I'm using 20 focus, focus steps between each autofocus step steps themselves uh, but my backlash is almost five times that with 93 and this is what i mean by those little focusers being cute nice small cheap and pretty sexy looking looking really uh, but being hot garbage they're not garbage they do their work but the backlash on some of the samples can be really really bad um, and it's actually from what I've seen, 93 is not the worst. Okay, anyway, let's go back to equipment. And we don't have a rotator. I have my telescope. My telescope is this little mount uh, here. And it's pre-polar uh, aligned. I never move it, so I don't need to do the polar alignment. If you do need to do the polar alignment, I highly, and that's what I always do, you recommend SharpCap Pro with its uh, polar alignment feature. It's, it's great. And I can just use my guide scope on top with the guide camera. It just works as is. Uh, the mount is currently parked, as we can see. Um, my pre-sequence pre checklist will actually check whether it's parked or not when I start the sequence. Uh, but let's unpark it. That way uh, we're sure that everything's fine. And I'm just going to make sure that the mount will actually move. Yes, it does. So I am properly connected to the mount. Um, everything's fine. Cool. So that's a good thing. And the mount real remembers where it is, so I don't even need to return it. Okay, so we're connected. And the guider, I'll do that later. I'd like to do that at, uh, at last weather. I don't really use it, but let's just connect to it. Uh, for this to work, you need the setting for the open weather map API key here. Um, so otherwise it's not gonna, gonna work. Um, and uh, similarly, you'll see when we use plate solving, uh, if you're using astrometry.net, which I highly recommend as a blind solver, as a backup, um, you'll need the API key from astrometry.net. And again, like for initial setup, all that kind of stuff, I can do a separate video if needed. Um, okay, so uh, now we have actually connected all of the equipment. Uh, so 
once this is done, we can actually go further to um, actually selecting our target, framing the target, and if necessary, um, I probably won't do this today because I'm just imaging a galaxy, um, but this can be the topic of a later kind of uh, video. And, um, and or we'll, uh, we'll do the plate solving, the autofocus, and actually start uh, the sequence. So thank you for watching this and see you next time.